This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. We're going to take a look at rational expressions and review the rules so that when we actually go to simplify an actual problem, uh, we'll, we'll know how to do that. So we're just going to come up with some basic uh, situations and describe all the rules. So there are four rules, so let's go through them. Here is rule number one. So rule number one says, uh, if you have like bases and you're multiplying those like bases, you're supposed to add the exponents. Um, you know, so to understand how this exactly works, imagine if we had, uh, let's say, 5 cubed times 5 squared. Uh, notice that the bases are the same. So, and we are multiplying the two bases together, so we just add those exponents together. So the answer is going to be the same base, so in other words, you keep that same base, and you're just going to add those two powers together. So this turns out to be 5 to the 5th, which is a big number, 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, okay? 5 multiplied by itself 5 times. It's going to be a big number. I don't want to do that at the moment. I just want to go over some examples. So let's try another one. Let's say we have, uh, I don't know, how about y to the I don't know, second times y to the seventh. Okay, we got like bases. So what do we do? We add the exponents and we keep the same base. So we add those. It turns out to be y to the ninth. If you have more than one base, like let's say you have a base of x and you've got a base of y and you're going to multiply that times, well, let's just come up with another one, uh, y to the, I don't know, second. Okay, so just say we're going to multiply those together. Well, you're going to multiply x squared times x cubed. So we're going to keep the same base and add the two powers together. We're going to keep the two, uh, we're going to multiply the y to the fifth times y squared. We're going to keep the same base, add the two exponents together. Okay, so that's an example of rule number one. Okay, so let's move on to rule number two. All right, so this is rule two, and uh, rule two, you can see that there's some division involved. So let's say we have. I'm just going to deal with some letters in this case. Uh, let's say we got c to the fifth, and we're going to divide it by c cubed. Okay, so this is kind of the reverse situation that we saw with rule number one. We're dividing instead of multiplying. So when we multiply, we add like bases. So we add the powers from like bases, that is, when we were multiplying, right? That was rule number one. Well, here we're dividing like bases, so let's see, the opposite of adding, yep, it's subtraction. So we're actually going to take the same base, and we're going to subtract those two powers. So it turns out to be c squared. There you go, so we got c squared. Uh, let's try another quick example. Let's say we've got y to the, uh, how about the eighth, and we divide it by y to the fifth. Okay, you keep the same base, and you subtract the exponents, so it's y to the third. Okay, so that is rule number two. Okay, here we have rule number three. So rule number three says that if we have a base, and it's being raised to a power, and in turn that is also being raised to a power, we simply keep the same base and multiply those two exponents together. So let's say we have x to the third, and it's being squared. Okay, so let's see. You know, really just means I've got x cubed times x cubed, but the shortcut says we just multiply those two exponents together. So that's 6. It's x to the sixth. Uh, let's say we got y to the, mm, I don't know, how about fourth? and we raise that to the third power. Well, it just means, let's see, we're going to multiply those two together. We got y to the twelfth. Just got to be careful here when you have a number also in front. So let's say we've got c to the fifth, 
and we want to cube this. Now you got to be careful here because for this example there is a power here, a 1 if you don't see it. So we're going to take these two powers and since we're raising these to the third power we're actually going to multiply both of those by 3. So 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, and actually 2 cubed, that's 2 times 2 times 2. That is, of course, 8. So their answer is 8 c to the 15th. So you just got to be careful when there's a number there. But that's rule 3. All right, we're going to move on to the last rule, rule number 4. All right, rule 4 is kind of a takeoff of our uh, second rule. Let's say we had x squared, and we had also x to the fifth. Remember rule two said that we're supposed to subtract. We take, when we're dividing like bases, you subtract the exponents. So here you're going to get a negative exponent. You're thinking, well, what does a negative exponent mean? Well, according to this rule, it's really pretty easy to do. It just means you're going to change the exponent from negative to positive, except you're going to move all of these uh, copies of x, like here we do have three copies of x, except they're in the denominator. So that's all that means. Let's try another problem. Okay, another problem we could do, and the shortcut would be, let's say we've got y to the negative tenth. Okay, that just means you have 10 copies of y, except they're in the denominator. If for some chance you're dealing with, let's say I've got, uh, I have a negative number, or actually a negative exponent, that is. So the negative number is actually the exponent, and it's already in the denominator. You notice that our c's are in the denominator. Well, you know, if, if you do know a little bit of math, I mean, I am going to take these and I'm going to move them in their own denominator. Okay, so what does this mean? It just means I'm taking 1 divided by 1 over c to the 4th. So remember how to change from division to multiplication? You change that to multiplication, you flip that. Okay, so the answer would be c to the fourth. Now, you don't have to go through all these steps every time you do a problem that looks strange like this. You'll notice that we had four c's that were negative, you know, had a negative exponent there. So those four c's had a negative exponent, and they were already in the denominator. So what happens after we manipulated this using the algebra? Well, actually, pre-algebra. Uh, it just turns out that those four c's got moved to the top. So what's the rule? The rule says that if you see a term that's got a negative exponent, you move it. If it's already in the numerator, you move it to the denominator. If it's in the denominator, you move it to the numerator. So that negative exponent means you move it away from whatever, wherever it is, numerator to denominator or denominator to numerator. Okay, those are the four rules explained, and uh, we will have uh, follow-up videos on uh, examples that may use more than one of these steps at the same time. So go back to Math Guide to check that out. So uh, make sure you also check out our uh, interactive quizzes in text lessons. Take care.